Who's it? You guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello, I'm Lydia. Today's video is one where I'm going to be answering some of your questions, and today I'm going to be answering questions relating to mental health in patients and the kind of things you can expect to see should you find yourself in a situation where you are going inpatient for your mental health. So to kick it off, here's the first question. So what are the bedrooms like? I find it varies from ward to ward with how bedrooms are set up but typically speaking you are on your own in a room, you have a bed, a desk, shelves and sometimes you have an ensuite in most of the wards i've been on there's been an ensuite to every every room i'll insert some pictures now of what the rooms have been like in my various admissions a lot of the times it depends on what kind of ward you're going to whether it's long term short term crisis assessment there are different types of wards which i'll get onto in a minute but typically this is what your bedroom is going to be like they're very basic they are safe they have specific things in place to make sure you can't lick at you to make sure you can't hurt yourself anyway and generally they're there to keep you safe um the do you have roommates part in the uk no sometimes there are dorms and there are people in the dorms but in your area like your cube your your room area no you do not have roommates it's just the uk i don't know about other countries i'm pretty sure in the us and in canada you do have roommates however i'm not 100 percent sure on that so let's talk about on the ward now so the first question i've got is is there a fixed schedule again this depends on the kind of ward but in my experience no. The only things that are specific times are meds and meals. There are like different group activities and opportunities for one-to-ones during the day, but there's no like set schedule so you don't have like meds, food, therapy, group activity, meds, and it's not, it's not a schedule. It's not like that. Is therapy compulsory? I have never done therapy while inpatient. Do you make friends? Most of the friends that I have now, I met while in hospital. They've seen you at your worst, at your lowest, at your most vulnerable, and they're still there for you. Is medication compulsory? So again, this depends on the ward and the admission. If you are an informal patient, which means you went in voluntarily, you're there of your own free will, then yes, it is optional. However, if you are detained under a section two or three, section 37 and some other different sections, then yes, medication is compulsory and it can be forced. And the last question I'm gonna answer is, what happened in my last admission? I was admitted to hospital after I made an attempt on my life. I'm not gonna go into details on that because I'm not gonna give anyone ideas. I was then taken to hospital informally, so I went in voluntarily. I then got very anxious, very agitated, tried to self-discharge and got detained under section five, part two of the Mental Health Act. And I was held on that for 72 hours. I also caught COVID while I was on the ward, which if you've followed me on Twitter, you know how badly that affected me. I am gonna say goodbye now. If you have any questions about any subject at all, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you to my Patreons, Junction Library and Sky High Tower. Thank you for being amazing. Thank you for supporting me. If you're interested in my Patreon, it is linked down below. And as well, if you wanna support the channel, there are other things down there that you can do. Go check out my TikTok. I post on there quite a lot at the minute. I'm spending an unhealthy amount of time on tiktok in other news i also got a job today which uh yeah i'll see you guys soon peace